Welcome back to Andrew Says. A terrible climate crisis is happening in Australia right now, and people are bravely taking the streets to combat it. Just kidding, of course. It's a bunch of greasy college students with shaved heads and mullets annoying people in the streets. A lot of trams and a lot of energy being wasted here for you guys being in the middle of the street. How do you feel about it? Well, I feel like you got to disrupt a little to sort of catch people's attention. But uh, yeah, I can't really speak for anybody but myself. I just rocked up and I'll let them speak. Yeah. Does it feel good being told what to do and what to think and how to act? Burn! Unnecessary no energy. The oceans are rising. No more compromise. Does anyone else here see the irony in this? No trams on a dead planet. Bro, some of these haircuts. <laughs> There's no way these haircuts aren't also stupid in Australia. There's no way it's a cultural divide where these haircuts aren't stupid. They look like extras from Mad Max movies. <laughs> oh, mate, you're going a little too fast. Mel Gibson would be proud. Welcome back, Andrew says. I wouldn't lie to you, especially not about Mad Max haircuts. It's funny to see what the different protests are about on the other side of the world in Australia. The, I feel like in Canada, Australia is just like an inverted version of us. It's warm instead of cold. Rugby instead of hockey. Cricket instead of, you know, poutine. That sort of thing. These people are somehow unable to see the irony in what they're doing. They're a bunch of privileged youth taking to the streets to block traffic and disrupt other people's work days, other people's evenings, because they don't have jobs, because they don't have other things to do. So they are the, the privileged class telling people who are the actual working class what to do whilst saying that they're the ones who are being oppressed. Imagine that. Imagine winning the lottery and then telling, you the, telling people that the government is holding them back. Doesn't make any sense. When told that there's a tram, or a train, for us who aren't, don't speak Australian, wasting electricity be, by them blocking the streets, one of them says, no trams on a dead planet, which I thought was very interesting, because I had this debate with somebody recently about the Green New Deal, where I said, if you implement something like this, the entire economy is going to collapse, and then what you want to happen is not going to be able to happen under a collapsed American economy. Now, if the economy collapses and America goes into supreme debt, and they're already in supreme debt, but if they go into places from whence they cannot return, I'll call it, basically when everything crumbles, when they don't have enough people to build all this stuff and they don't have the money to put into all this infrastructure, how are they going to dig their way out of financial ruin the same way every second and third world country does? You guessed it, it's with fossil fuels. How do you think China and India came into so much money. Hyper-progression through industrialization, which equals fossil fuels. But it's also why they're such huge polluters, which is why it doesn't make sense, and why these people have no foresight, no concept of the rest of the world, because what they're doing is they're complaining to their own governments who are actually some of the best places in terms of not polluting. Of course, everyone can always do better. But the real criminals here, if you want to call it that, are China and India. United States to some degree, but they're still way better than these other countries. And these people don't know that, or they think that just attacking the United States is a, is a great way to do it. Never hear anybody complaining about India, though. There is no doubt that the climate, climate is changing, and we need to protect the environment. It's not, uh, it's, not that we think we, it's not that we think it's completely made up. It's just the carbon taxes and the government and the deep state applying these taxes to take all our money. But it's also not a doubt that the developing countries create a lot of byproduct in the form of CO2 and other forms of pollution. And we do need to shift to greener energy sources, but not in the World War II-esque manner that's being suggested on these things like the Green New Deal. Because I would imagine that this is what the people in Australia, these protesters, want. Of course, they don't really say any demands during this stuff. They just want action now. That's all they want. So the irony that is not lost is that these people who think that they're fighting their oppressive government, who wants to hold them down with, uh, I don't know, CO2, pressure them down to the earth, is that these people think they're fighting their oppressive government while also suggesting more government overreach and more government control in their lives over through these climate action plans, which tell you what you can do, tell you what you can own, tell you what you must work on, tell you how to travel, raise your taxes, do all these things that the government gets more control and more money out of you 
but that's somehow the solution. But also the government's oppressing us at the same time. Oppress us now and then oppress us more to achieve our freedom and save the planet. Not only that, but they point to studies from the ultimate crooked government body of the UN, which is just a bunch of unelected bureaucrats getting together and saying, how can we extract money from stuff? The peacekeeping days are not, uh, are not prevalent as they once were, as people have figured out what these things actually are. The UN is a government body of a bunch of people who figure out how to get more money for themselves. And that's what happens with unelected bodies, like the EU. What is a person who just gets appointed to a position in Belgium got to do with England? Somebody tell me. Are they going to look out for their own benefits, or are they going to look out for the interest of the country that they have nothing to do with? It doesn't make any sense. Now, these clips are from Avi Yemeni. He's an Israeli Aussie, I believe, which is why it's funny when they call him the dreaded N-word, the not the other N-word, but the socialism N-word. And he's been covering this, and he's been covering stuff in Hong Kong, and he caught up with some of the protesters, the climate protesters, when they were disrupting the mall. <laughs> One of the many people in Extinction Rebellion that is prepared to get arrested uh, to help send the message um, about what we need to do uh, to win climate justice. Climate justice! Do we want it? Yeah! bro and i say bro again come on has it ever ever been more obvious than this that this is all for attention has it i'm not trying to be mean i don't want to be mean youtube says to not be mean but tell me a situation where this girl walks into the middle of a crowded space with a megaphone and people care the answer is there's no other situation no one likes people with a megaphone to begin with let alone somebody talking about climate change but it's so sad. They're so emotionally stunted. The Spring Rebellion. Come on. First of all, you couldn't sound more communist if you tried. You're in a mall yelling things at people in the middle of the day while they're trying to shop. Are you rebel What are you rebelling against? Forever 21? What's the popcorn stand? Kernels? We think Kernels has been contributing to the climate change. We must stop the production of popcorn. They're so ineffective. You, I'll talk to them. You guys are so ineffective. That instead of stopping you when you're trying to disrupt the middle of a mall in people's days, that the cops are just like, eh, let them tire themselves out. <laughs> like children. It's time the government wakes up and finds a set of new opinions about the climate. It's time to find a new set of opinions about the climate. They urge. Nothing's really happened. But we also have no ideas, so let's just get some people in power who will blindly agree with us, even though we have no actual opinions. It's just we demand action. We demand the climate stop. We demand the earth stop spinning. Progress must halt and tax everybody even more. This would be a communist uprising of idiots if the internet didn't exist. That's what's saving us right now. The internet's what's saving us from having a communist uprising in the Western country and Western democracies. Yo, bro, I'd love to help you with the Spring Rebellion right now, but there's this Fortnite tournament that I'm planning on entering. I need to practice. Bro, I'd love to do this, but I've got a Wiccan festival to attend. <laughs> if you don't know, by the way, I did a video at a Wiccan festival. What we do understand here is we've got some sort of LARPing community. Perhaps this was one of their weapons of choice. A staff, otherwise known as a stick. What are we eating? Um, so this is Lammas bread. Um, the, uh, <coughs> so she said that we could essentially just finish it off. Who's she? The nature. Uh, the, um, I don't know what her official title is because a lot of it is uh, dependent on you know what someone prefers. So I guess you could just call her the Wiccan Reverend if you want. Okay. Pardon? Okay, she prefers that title. Okay, perfect. So Reverend Marie she told us that we could uh, finish the rest of the Lammas bread and put the rest back to nature. Probably some of those people were looking, uh, looking to go to this climate protest, but they had a Wiccan festival. Sorry, bro, I'd love to rebel with you, but the spring harvest is coming up, and I need to share some bread with the earth. The, the Wiccan wheel is turning, and can't pass it up, bro. Sorry.